This is a laser. And lasers are cool. This particular model is a Laser Master 3 from Orchur. It features a 400 by 400 millimeter cutting area, which comes out to a which comes out to about a 15 and a half by 15 and a half inch cutting area for us Imperials. This model here was sent to me by Orchur for review, and they sent me the champagne gold color right there. And the model here has a 10 watt laser diode that's perfect for engraving and cutting. The construction in the machine wasn't too bad. It took me maybe about an hour to get it together. One, because I was filming at the same time. But two, there was a couple of things I wasn't quite sure on and how it went together. Not that it was wrong or bad or difficult. It's just simply not knowing the intention. And once I figured that out, it wasn't too bad at all and it went right together. There was no other problems. And one thing that I do like is once I got it together, it didn't rock at all. I didn't have to try to shim it or move it. I sat flat on my flat surface and it was ready to go. This is all put together. It took me about two hours in total. There were a couple of things in the construction I wasn't sure on, and a lot of it had to do with cable management. Once I figured that out, it went together pretty easily. If you want a detailed video, there's a lot of videos on YouTube that'll show you a step-by-step -step instruction. I just want to show you the laser, and here it is. The Laser Master 3 is probably one of the last of the older generation to feature a full upgrade, especially with a 10 watt laser and a bunch of new features they'll be showing off in a couple of minutes. This one here has been scaled down quite a bit, but it's still a pretty powerful 10 watt laser. We have a single cable for the data and power, and we also have a built in area for direct air assist right into the module. Some other key features of the machine is a very low profile, almost race car like construction, almost too low in some ways but I'll talk about that a little bit later. Built-in USB, Wi-Fi, and power on that side. An easy push button way to start the machine. And also a built-in emergency stop button. Safety first. One additional feature is that it has a mechanical stop. So it doesn't use limit switches to stop and figure out where it is in space. It has a mechanical switch that when it hits a certain spot, it registers that that's the end. And that's done with that little screw right there. And there's one on both sides. It registers a mechanical stop. and knows that it's at its origin. And it can pick up from there. And it works really well that way with light burn. The machine is definitely more than just your basic extruded aluminum. It looks like it's a little bit more of a custom job. And it shows. The build quality is really nice. On a lot of other machines, there's a huge bundle of wires that you have to keep track of. And try to figure out how to route through the machine. A tour has actually made it even nicer by having one thick cable, although it splits into a couple different ends on that side, it's a lot easier to manage here. Not quite as nice as a drag chain still, but I can kind of coil that on the outside and I might figure out a more sophisticated way of routing it later on. But for right now, I think that's working uh, pretty well. On the back of the machine, there is a port for a rotary engraver and there's a real nice switch back here to switch back and forth between the rotary and the regular Y motor for typical engraving and cutting. I also want to point something else out. Orchur sent me out their custom laser engraving platform. And this is very, very different. Most times you'll see something called a honeycomb tray, which actually has a pretty high profile, but is really helpful in dissipating the heat and minimizing burning on the backside of the pieces that you might be cutting through. But this almost looks like a grill that you would cook on. It has all these little fins here with a little bit of a recess in there for any kind of debris to fall down, but also for the laser to penetrate through and for air and heat to escape, which is actually a pretty good design. Something else I really like, on a lot of the lasers and systems, they don't have a solid base with anything to kind of reference off of. A lot of people have been making their own and making their own grid, kind of like what I have on the top of my CNC machine right here. But they have integrated this slide system is really nice to use. So you can move pieces around in space and keep them square to your laser. And then this unscrews and moves up and down as well. And having something to register against that keeps pieces square is really nice. As long as you have this square to your gantry. So you have to make sure you have that in place. But otherwise, I really like this. And it's low profile, which matters a lot with this machine because it is 
so um, so low. So I think Orchura hit it out of the park with this. This is the first time I've seen this design, but I would actually possibly buy another one for other lasers that I have because I really like this setup. So point for Orchura. So with that, let's go ahead and put it through its first startup. According to Orchur, this machine will engrave up to speeds of 15,000 millimeters per minute, which is really fast. And I think I got it upwards about 10 to 12,000. And I think the G-Shock sensor kicked in just like it did on the Ofera when I tested that machine um, earlier this year. But you can disable that or change the sensitivity in Lightburn. And they have guides for that online. I'll see if I can find a few and post them in the description for you. But this machine is fast. This is one of the engraving tests that I ran and I did a couple different at different speeds and different powers. I think this one came out about the best. I think that is a pretty good result. And a couple other with Carlin because you can never have enough Carlin. That was at 100%, um, which was more than enough power and probably even too dark. And then that was running a lot faster, but of course it kind of breaks down once you run it faster. I think that's about the sweet spot right there. And of course, and something I want to point out really quick is that the quality of your image has a lot to do with how your final engrave comes out. So don't always point at the machine. A lot of times it's about image prep. And even this can be prepped a little bit better. It's an older image. So I actually wouldn't even fault the machine. Um, a lot of it might be the prep. This was the cutting test with the three millimeter plywood, which is pretty much the standard size for most people when they do laser engraving and cutting. And you have pretty clean edges. It came out right away and I did have to do two passes, but I'm okay with that. And there was some charring on the back. Not a lot. I consider that acceptable. And that was without air assist. So there's a little bit of burning on the back, which we always have to compensate for anyways, even with higher end lasers, this can become an issue, but it was a clean cut. And that's primarily what I care about at this point in time, especially with a 10 watt laser. This was cut out on the Laser Master 3, and by comparison, you can see it's even cleaner cut and very minimal burning on the back. So I'm very impressed with that. There's a lot of diode lasers that have trouble cutting through even three millimeter plywood, and this did a great job and some pretty intricate detail as well, especially the bridge on the inside of the nose is a pretty delicate piece and it did a great job. I'm very impressed. The final test that I ran was on some stainless steel. A lot of these diode lasers are capable of engraving or marking is probably a more accurate term of marking steel. And the Laser Master 3 did a great job. A little bit less dark than I would have liked compared to some other lasers, but it still did a very good job. And it did it at a pretty fast speed. In fact, the first test that I ran was probably a lot faster than it should have been for steel, but I was still pretty impressed with the results. I've tested quite a few lasers on this channel, and each one has some really good features and some that probably can be improved. And the same goes for the Laser Master 3. It is a nice machine. It is well built. It's got a sleek design. It went together really easily and it works kind of as expected. But, but there's a couple things I think they sacrificed in the name of having such a cool looking design. One is that it is way too low profile. Most things that are engraved, especially if you're using even something like a honeycomb tray, requires that you have the laser module up a little bit higher. And you can move it up and down on the gantry a little bit, but you have some pretty limited travel and there's no built in extension legs. You can buy them separate from Ortura and they look pretty cool, but there was nothing included in the box like there is with some other companies. And they does limit the flexibility of what you could do with it right out of the box. The second item I'll point out is power. While the power on this laser is rated at 10 watt and it does perform pretty close to as expected, there's some things that didn't do quite as well as I had hoped. One is engraved metal. And I know that's not necessarily a priority for a lot of people, but in comparison to other lasers of that same category right now, I've been able to get a much darker engrave than I was able to with the Orchur. But that's actually 
pretty much it. That would probably be my only constructive feedback on the machine. Otherwise, it performed really well. I'm actually really impressed with the way the machine cut. Now, I did need to run it in two passes for a three millimeter piece of plywood, which has kind of been my experience with most of these machines so far. I haven't had a chance to test out a 20 watt diode yet, and I'm hoping that those would work a little bit closer to what you'd expect out of a, um, a laser cutting machine. But two passes I don't think is unreasonable, and they went at a pretty good speed, and it was clean. The first time I ran those cuts, I ran it without air assist, and there is very, very little burning on the backside. And then, of course, the speed. I mentioned the speed before, but the speed is a huge positive factor in this machine. Being able to run and engrave almost twice as fast as some other machines and still get a pretty good result is, is not a make or break for me, but I know it matters to a lot of people, especially people that want to do production with the machine. If you get those settings dialed in in Lightburn, you could probably improve the quality from there as well. If you made it this far in the video, I really want to say thank you. It means a lot that you've taken time out of your day to watch these videos. I love making so much for my audience. And I really love reviewing lasers. I really love lasers in general. I think they're an amazing tool for the shop. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. You'll get notifications of when I have new videos coming out, whether it's new laser videos or other making related videos, which I have some non-laser related videos coming out in a very short time. They're already finished. I just have to edit them and then put them out. We also have a bunch of videos in the back catalog. Go ahead and check that out. I'm sure you'll find something you like and can find useful there. Like I mentioned before, your views are much appreciated. They help keep the channel going. And if you'd like to support in a different manner, we also have a Patreon at patreon.com slash geekbuilders. We have different tier rewards. And I'm in the process of posting some exclusive laser designs that will only be available for free for Patreon members. We also have a shop where you can buy merchandise such as t-shirts and other geek-related goods and maker-related goods at geekbuilders.net. Just go to the shop on the menu and you'll be able to find all the items right there. Once again, thank you for watching. Have a great day and I will see you in the next episode.